Every one of you knows the typical AD carry Kai'Sa, but what if I told you that mid lane is actually the by far best role for Kai'Sa? In the bottom lane, she has many matchups that are literally unplayable, but for the mid lane, she gets to scale a lot faster, gets faster XP, has an easier laning phase as she's not facing off against brutally overpowered support champions, and once she has her first item, she instantly clears a wave with her first ability. So, without any further ado, let's hop into the video, let's take a good look at what she does and how you can actually replicate what she's doing and be the best Kaiser you can ever be. So let's take a look at it. First in the early game, taking some control in the river area, making sure you're not getting caught off guard here. Quite the interesting match here with the Varus. What are these sounds that are coming in so crazily? I have no idea. Look for the options she has here. So much aggression, so much damage. It's already being dealt. Something you never want you never want to do against like any type of Kaiser player. Going close and then being able to be traded with an auto attack in your first ability is an actual death sentence. And it only gets worse and worse as the game goes on, simply for the fact that the first evolve of the Kai'Sa for her first ability will deal so much extra damage. So she's looking for another opportunity. Look at this trading, walking up, first ability, walks away. Look at all the damage the Kai'Sa is dealing, the Brutal and the Krokens, they're really doing some work here. That is some... Big damage, if you ask me. The Varus is also very close to dying already. Like, it's so close. Lee Sinon makes it appears from the top left, warded out, goes for the big all in play here, knowing that he will die anyway. Avoids giving the Lee Sin anything, because the Lee Sin could technically just catch up whatsoever she would have done here. I don't think that even made sense. Anyway, Lee Sin is now on the crab, but you get the idea of what I wanted to say. Like, Lee Sin would be able to catch up to her, regardless of what she does. And it depends on the Zin being there to do something about it. We know that Lee is on the top half of the map, so leaning towards the right side should be the correct play. Varus has a slight H H P um, H XP disadvantage. Doesn't really matter too much. Just need to be careful on the level 5 to not get all in, because that could be, well, very detrimental to your gameplay as, well, dying is never a good thing. Needs to be careful, the Lee might still linger around, you know, these little jungle demons. But yeah, as long as he can make sure to not just die on the spot to the next Lee gang, who should be topside now after the reset. Mayhaps. Because you never know, like, the moment that Lee Sin gets level 5, he can theoretically go anywhere. Also, Karma's movement on the map is very suspicious, walking into the river, going for some deep vision. This screams Lee Sin to me. Or she's just borderline griefing. It's like always these kind of things. And apparently she is borderline griefing. Amazing. Wild rift. Anyway, we are back walking to mid lane. Very close to our first abilities upgrade with the first ability. And with that under our belts, it's going to be a lot easier. Something you also have to be very much aware of is the Lee Sin coming from the chicken cap. You can just jump on the wall with safeguard, kick you into the face, and then you are in for a very bad time. The set just altered the Camille and the Camille just magically died on the spot. First ability not really being evolved yet, so no big damage onto the Kaiser, but gets a big passive proc onto the Varus. Xin Zhao is now waiting patiently, coming around the corner, looking for a potential play. But where's Brother Lee Sin? Where is Brother Lee Sin? The Varus now contests these chicken camps. It's the ultimate. Lee Sin is now on the chase, looks for a potential kill, but misses the Q turn onto the Varus. Varus dies now on the spot. Kaisa still has everything available. Even if she ults after, she still be, will be safe. And now the Xin Zhao is walking. We will probably execute in the if. top lane tower there. But now the set is there. And the Lee Sin got the kill, but the set didn't get an assist. However, he got some XP. Okay. We have finally overcome the hardest phase for the Kaiser, which is the early game. The most difficult one, because you don't really have any contest for wave. Your only trading pattern, realistically, is all attack on your Q. And if you have the biggest luck of the century, you can hit a second ability as well. Other than this, there's not much you can do. Now you see that the wave instantly disappears, and only like this uh, bazooka minion is left. Goes in for a quick little trade. Ooh, misses the second ability. What a sad moment. Oh, needs to be careful of the Lee Sin. Look at this little goblin on his way. 
since I also on the move, we really want to get in that wave. Pop our second ability, get the wave done here, at least in a retreating to the bottom side of the map. And Jin Zhao is going back to Farmerama. Now that Lee Sin is actually going for the Krug camp? This will be a massive rotation, I believe. This will be a massive brawl, like a 3 against 3 on the bottom side of the map. And it's going to be a very interesting outcome. Like, Lee Sin locks him down, the Chains of Corruption come from the Varus. Set uses his second ability, still will fall eventually. Varus now doing so much DPS to the Kaiser Barrier being popped. Needs to be careful here because the passive proc is there, flash away from the Fateful Auto Attack, needs to be mindful, any more damage and he's dead. The Zin Zhao avoids certain death by having the passive proc'd and survives with a sliver of HP and all this just happened because he avoided the ability proccing the Blight Stacks on him. <laughs> very, very well played, something you definitely do not see every single day. We're also working our way towards the Nashes too, personally I'm more of a fan of going for a Sense Reaver. A Sense Reaver is, I believe, a better choice than Dustblade if you want to go a transition into AP. Also, personally, I'm not a big fan of Kraken Slayer, but I can see the reason. Ooh, and they lose the Herald early game, but they might get a free kill onto the least and 105 gold into the pocket here. The set, I do not think you want to do this yet, and he doesn't do so. Lee Sin's death will now lead to a mid wave, mid wave being taken. Chains of Corruption's hit. This will certainly be the death. Ooh, nice shield. Will the passive damage be enough? No, so close. The first ability nearly came out again. And then one more fateful auto attack would have been the difference. Varus has so much damage. He's such a scary champion, honestly, even on mid lane. Like, this champion is so good in so many roles simply for the fact that he's such a big bully and has such high damage values. It doesn't really matter if you go tank Varus. If you got top Varus, it, it literally doesn't matter. Like, this champion's damage goes nuts. But yeah, as per normal, um, this is the hard, like, still one of the hardest stage. Nice flash ultimate by him. The least in Q connects, jumps into the Kaiser. Kaiser will certainly just. Ooh, will they deny this tower? No, they will. This tower has 6 HP, but now the Xin Zhao is left alone in the front line. The Kaiser made a decision. I'm not quite sure if I'm cool with that decision. Could she have chased with him? What do you think? Let me know. Looking for some pot shots. Hits the sword. Oh, hot. Does she gold in? Ooh, the cool. Oh, no. The active thumb sadly dissipated or faded, so she couldn't hold anymore. He's sitting on the other side of the map being full life again. Jungle roll, by the way, baby. Amazing. Elisa now literally cleaning house or trying to clean house in the jungle. Kicks the Kaiser into the face. Barrier being popped. Killer instinct over the wall. And we escape. Yeah, at least one of the most mobile champions in the game while also featuring a brutally OP early game, mid game, and still a decently powerful late game depending on your mechanical skill and the enemy's team compositions. Who baiting this virus in the chains of corruption missed big damage, but the least in Q hits, it was all just a bait. It's just everyone is constantly mid lane. It feels like such an annoying role here. Like every single play is staged from mid lane, every single thing that happens, mid lane, mid lane, mid lane, you walk up, ah, well, there's a jungler. You don't walk up, well, the jungler is gonna come from behind. Ah, well, you do something, ah, there's a herald. Like, it's definitely not an enjoyable state. And whatever champion you play, it will be most likely the similar outcome, so, yeah. And in case you didn't know, if you want to know if the Dust Blake auto attack is available for a champion, just look at the hands. If they have this reddish glow, the Dust Blake auto is available. This will be a heavy trade. Look at all the damage into the face. It needs to be by. Oh, the Chase of Corruptions connect. Exhaust also connects. Look at the Varus damage. This is what I mean. This champion is crazy. And now the Lee Sin is on the move here. The ultimate of the Zin Zhao keeps him safe from all the ranged damage. The Varus just can't get anything done against this, well, invulnerability. Second of all, coming in now. We have our Nash's Tooth complete, which means we have a lot more DPS. 
So first item is pretty good for duels unless you get stat checked like by Varus. You need to avoid uh, his ultimate or you just certainly die. Also having exhaust into you is something you usually can't overcome because any AD carry against any other AD carry, the one with the exhaust usually always wins. Unless you have so much range and cannot even get to use your exhaust. Lisa makes the appearance, dashes over the wall, big damage by the Kai'Sa and the Camille. Gets jumped into the wall, flashes out, goes in with the kill instinct again. The Lisa will instantly get killed, and now it's a clean house angle. Ooh, Varus on the move. Look at the Darkstar Varus walking up, looking for potential victims. Chains of Corruption is missed because he failed to flash. Now the turn happens instantly. The Kai'Sa picks up another kill. No mercy for the Wicked here. Any single mistake instantly punished, instantly realizing that the Chains of Corruptions have missed with the flash. And yeah, when that happens, you know, I, I've messed up, I will die now, and he did die instantly. And you see, like, the farm speed increased so hard. Just by getting, um, the first of all, upgrade. Also, something I want to add, in case you didn't know, a Sense Reaver as your first item, if you want to transition into AP Kaiser, is better for the following reason. Number one, it grants you crit, it grants you 15 less AD, yes, it also grants you no lethality, however, the damage of a Sense Reaver, ooh, Lee Sin steals this dragon, is actually adaptive damage. It, ooh, nice kill instinct over the wall, kills the Varus here, all the ven- like, it's just vengeance time. Ah, bro, you're just dead. Anyway, back to the Sense Reaver topic. A Sense Reaver, does not deal physical damage only. In the tooltip it says, or it says, deals bonus physical damage. However, that is not true. If you have more AP than 80, or by design are an AP champion and have more AP than 80, your Essence Reaver on spells will deal bonus magical damage. Which means, if you for example play Kaisa, you buy an Essence Reaver and then transition into AP, and your Adaptive Damage turns into AP from, for example, your Nash's Tooth, because you have more AP than 80, then the bonus damage of your Sense Reaver will be displayed as magic damage, and it will be magic damage. You can just test it out in the practice tool, and you will see that you'll deal a lot of extra damage. Not to forget to mention, since you'll be running Lethal Tempo, the potential crit chance will help you even more. And look at the set survivability, look at the region the man has. This champion is so tanky, but not the Riftmaker makes so much, like, it, it helps so much. Because, again, Damage is mitigated by armor and magic resist. We, we all know that. And the higher the number is, um, the bigger the mitigation will be, obviously, because 50% of 1,000 is going to be 500. Ooh, they shield the Baron! And mitigation of 300 uh, by 50% will be like 150. So if you, however, deal 1,000 damage pre-mitigation, Riftmaker will add 92 damage to the mix. Now, if it dealt damage depending on the mitigated damage, so only let's say 500, then it will deal less than 50 damage. So you see, it's quite a big difference that it deals... Uh, ooh, look at the big damage of the Haymaker. Without the barrel, would have been certain that the Leeson didn't connect with the first ability thanks to the Kaiser flash here, the Lee Sin on the hunt down here, the Camilla's now coming, needs to be really careful, still has Zona's available, Lee Sin misses the Q again, walks close, wants to kick, but nope, there's the Axtec ultimatum, as well as the Stasis, and the Avengers just have arrived. No escape, you will not escape your pain, my friend, there is just nothing you can do, just certain death awaits. And yeah, for our next item, we will be having... Ravenon's Death Cap. With Ravenon's Death Cap, our damage is heavily spiking, because in case you didn't know, if you take a look at Nash's Tooth, it has quite the insane AP scaling in sense of on-hit AP damage. Now combine this with your bonus attack speed and just the overall AP you get on AP Kaiser, you will quickly see how much damage you're actually dealing. Just look at the bonus magic damage on it right now, it's 152 combined with the Plasma Passive. Looking for an angle here, the set is on the runaway, misses the second ability, the Void Seeker's being missed, the Lee kicks into the face, the Sonic Wave connects, goes in for a quick combo here, ult comes out, killing Instinct, avoids certain death with a quick little stealth here and some extra damage, but now his team already lost. They get the Lee Sin. however, two people fall. Varys is now isolated here, will he be able to get to the Varys stealth close? Look at the healing, will he snap the Varys? Ooh, it connects, another pot shot coming in in two. 
One. Does he hit him? He hits him. And easy kill pickup. Another one coming in. The harmonic echoes of the genre coming in. Coach, nice put about the Nile, but a Jenna tornado. And the Haymaker is being used early. Ezreal just throwing in some skill shot, trying to be Drogda, but missing every single thing. Picking up these 32 buckaroos while passing by. Quickly, like this is another thing, like with Essence where you just one shot the cannon waves always, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me for a moment in the comment section. Cause it's really, really powerful. Leeson coming in with a dash. Safe got on cooldown now. Can't really escape. Has to walk at the wall. Dies instantly. Ravenous death cap in base available now. We have Arden Sensor and Harmonic Echoes. Oh, in case you didn't know. Since you're having Harmonic Echoes and you're healing everyone around you. Well, not everyone. Up to four people. Um, you apply Ardent to everyone. The same applies to Staff of uh, Flowing Water, which means that the, the value of these items is increased again. Because normally, on Jana, you can only shield two people, like yourself and another person, and apply all of these effects with ultimate. But now you can consistently do so on a low cooldown, literally spamming these benefits onto your allies. Ezreal need to be really careful. Ooh, look at the damage of the Ezreal. But look at the damage of the Kaiser. Avoid certain death he gets. <gasps> the Ezreal misses the ultimate. The set now on the run. The Zdana is just saving him. The shield, the veil. Look at the damage. She just sniped him. Nice haymaker by the set. The Kamano blocked a certain... Ooh. That would have killed him. Most definitely. Uh, we are killing the little forest spirit, this annoying little creature of the night. Also, by the way, is anyone of you playing Path of Exile? Because I saw the new expansion is launching soon, and like I'm curious. Uh, is anyone of you playing? Do you even know the game? If so, just just tell me. And what's your favorite? Like I used to play Artka. Ooh, quick little break here from my rant. Does she have Force of Nature? Does Karma have Twin God or Force of Nature? It looked like that. Anyway, is anyone of you playing this? They're really flipping Nasher. Are you serious? Ah, well, time to flip the game for no apparent reason. Two people are dead, but it's very dangerous to even go for this because they still have so much control here. Xin Zhao could potentially steal this. Janna's surviving the backline. Xin Zhao cl cleans this Baron. The damage of the Kaiser is insane, but now she's out of mana. Tragedy. But yeah, like, Nasher plays are so risky. Even though you have people dead, you need to take a look at who are the strong people on the enemy team. And if there's sufficient peel for the Kaiser, and the Xin Zhao just has free access, it is not going to be too easy ending this Nasher, and therefore, well, freely winning. It's just too much of a risk if you ask me. Oh, Camille! It misses the hookshot onto the tower, or rather the... Um, the ruins of the tower. And yeah, this will still mark the end of the game. Poor enemy team. Oh yeah, and did I mention we have a second video coming right up as well as a hand cam. High elo gameplay, the highest possible. This time with a Kaiser, again an AP, but this time in the bottom lane position. I've teased you earlier that the mid lane is the best position for Kaiser, but if you have a Lulu, or Yumi, life in bot lane becomes substantially easier. But here's one thing, just one tiny detail, that is going to be the big difference maker. And here we have the Hex Flash. Look at the early aggression. The Lulu is just stomping. Like, guys, you should never underestimate the power of a Yordle. Like, Yumi dam uh, like Lulu damage is... Look at this aggression! Nope, uh-uh, this just didn't happen. Lucian Nami getting stomped by Kaiser Lulu is just a support differential. In all honesty, number one, if you go for isolated traits into a Kaiser, getting the pot shots of the first ability, as well as the Lulu literally beating you up, it's something you never want to have happen to you. Lulu picks damage is crazy. And again, for the bottom left build, this time a slight variation. We have Bloodline, we have Hex Flash. We also have no anti-shielding. However, we go for Boots of Mana and Infinity Orb. Looking for all of these options here, look at the Lulu damage, so toxic. And the enemy team isn't trading back properly. They're spacing very poorly. They're taking so much damage. It's just a complete bot lane gap. And it's always so fun to see when people play bot lane in an aggressive way where they punish the enemy champion. 
Also, Lulu having a relic shield, the only real support item, by the way, just uh, putting it out there. Kha'Zix alone instantly smites here. Hex flashes over the wall, nearly dies instantaneously. This aggra- Lucian? Are you good? He just dashed over and got himself bonked. You can't make this shit up. Nah, the depression- what is Seth doing here? Huh? Did I miss something? What, what, what is the top laner doing there now? I'm so confused. <laughs> like, I just look at the minimap and it somehow worked, but the Camille got 50 billion gazillion trillion gold for this play. I do not understand. It's fine. It's fine. Back then when esports was still a thing, we said, ah, well, it's just a scrim. It's fine. And then, then he heard, like, Zefter, like flip up the lighter, <laughs> the stress reduction therapy. No, oh, no way. Good times. Kalen's now being, ooh, fl hack flashing into the brush here just for some fancy points. Having the Kalen Instinct available, hack flash coming up in another 12 seconds here. The enemy Kha'Zix was spotted earlier. It's very risky and Ami goes up for a quick little trade, gets so much damage blown into the face back. Bubble doesn't connect, nice sidestab, but the third ability. So much damage, ults in, goes for big chunk as damage. Well, Nami, ignite gap. Hack flashing for fun. Hell yeah. And if you hack slash, by the way, like look, hack slash, if you time it right, you can just hack slash into normal flash instantly. How funny is it? Just hacking with a double flash. And now, well, now technically the bad part about Kaiser Ants, first item being completed. Lulu also a true sweetheart, cause she's rushing a completed item first and not shitty boots. Rushing, like, okay, um, quick explanation as to why. Lulu is basically another item. Like, it's a, a tiny backpack on the back of an AD carry. And in this backpack, you have certain items that empower the AD carry. Boots are not necessarily part of this because the boots do not help you as much as the completed art and sensor. The reason for this is um, Lulu is usually linked to the AD carry and always slightly behind the AD carry, just buffing him or her. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if she's a little bit faster or slower or doesn't have an earlier power spec with the boots because it really doesn't matter in terms of power level. However, having an ardent completion towards the first objective is a major difference. The damage differential is quite high as the bonus magic damage at this point is a lot as well as the extra stats. Just think about having Berserker Grease on top for free. It's it's really... Ooh, yoink! My grump now! Now we move back to the wave, instantly one tapping the wave, goodbye. I need to run more experiments with the Sense Reaver though, like to showcase why Sense Reaver is so good, what it does to the wave, etc. Ooh, Irelia being caught in transition uh, right before Herald spawns. Nash's talent being picked up at this point, still AD. Now, they're trying to deny the enemy's ability to just get this Herald for free. In the meantime, the enemy bot lane is taking so many places. This is a massive investment. If they fail, it's a massive loss. They get the Herald on the enemy team, but now they're trying to go for more kills. They try for options. However, this first ability hit on the minions. What is Syndra aiming for, brother? Hello? That's illegal. Now, look at, look at the issue. They lost the Herald as well as losing bot lane tower. They were hardcore winning on the bottom side. And the enemy just got so much gold back while they tried to deny the Herald play. However, they lost they lost both and it's such a massive thing to lose. Goldwire's solution is still down quite a lot. However, he was able to recuperate quite a decent amount thanks to this. If, however, Kaisers or Lulu's team got the Herald, everything would have been fine. And also, did you know, by the way, they stealth changed Herald in the past. In the past, if you died while Harold was spawned and charged, you didn't get any gold. Now, like, I don't know for how long already, you still get the gold even though you're dead, which I think is something that should not be the case. You should be, like, uh, I'm just not a fan of how they changed Harold. Number one, to just ignore minions, to just walk through. Number two, to just give you gold even if you die. It just makes, it just makes 
it just just removes so much like strategic element from the game. Like we are getting closer and closer. I mean, we are already at a point where we just smash buttons, aren't we? Anyway, you got my idea. Man, you know, recently whenever I touch my my charger, it feels so bad because the moment I just I just I just touch it slightly, I'm disconnecting, and it's like depression. Deluxe. Lucian that comes around the corner with the culling, tries to clear the wave, scatter the weak, just dealing some chip damage onto the enemy, nothing else will happen. We have the ARM standoff, the Mexican standoff, nothing, it's just, well, we're just looking at each other. Amazing. Now it's time to get the scuttle crab. Need to be careful of the cars, because Lucian now used Arden Blaze to get closer. They lost the scuttle crab, if I'm not mistaken. The enemy Lucian got it with like 9 HP. Camilla now making a rotation towards mid lane has Hackstack Ultimatum available. If you're familiar with any type of pro play, you best believe that Hackstack Ultimatum being off cooldown equals death for anyone that is caught within it. Now they finally make the rotation towards the other side of the map taking down some towers and enjoying their time. Amazing. Camille just poking out a little bit. The set is not a good target to be all in on because yeah, too much damage. Oh, we saw the Kha'Zix and the Syndra still died when we saw all of that on the minimap and now imagine we see it on the big screen on hers, of hers. Nami walking a lot too close. Takes so much damage, dies to the Lulu, be it the Ignite or a Pix or whatever. Now the set goes all in, there's no more threats here, the set is tanking all the damage, Killing Instinct out of the tower, Kha'Zix now makes an appearance, nobody's isolated, no jump reset for the insect. And now it's all about survival and fight, ooh, nice flash by the Camille, locking down the Lulu and killing her instantly, needs to be careful, needs to flash away because of the Camille first ability, well played by the Kaiser. No mercy. The Chinese Tablet Gamer Association. Now working towards the Riftmaker again. Riftmaker making life so much easier and so much, uh, well, easier to pilot your champion. Because think about this, like the Omnivamp is so powerful because you have multiple sources of damage. Number one, you have magic damage. Number two, you have physical damage. Number three, with Riftmaker, you have true damage. And all these sources will now provide you with healing. And if you're asking, why the heck do we have Infinity Orb? In case you didn't know, Kai'Sa passive also crits if you have Infinity Orb if the target is below the threshold HP. If you hit your second ability onto the Kha'Zix, he also can't stealth anymore because he'll always be visible. Also something that's very neat to know. As per usual, if you want more of this content, please check out the link in the description below. Give them a like, give them a follow. Same applies obviously to me, uh, you know how it is. However, Make sure to check them out, they have amazing gameplays. Look at the domination on the map, just taking everything there is possible. Now the Fist is going to probably make a major mistake, but will he have his troll pole available? Hex flashing over the wall to not make to make sure that the Syndra isn't getting any of your gold. Or 200 gold away from a big item spike? But having to reset for Dragon, that feels bad, man. Red buff quickly being picked up, not much of a problem. The enemy team slowly coming closer to the dragon. This will mark the second dragon for the Kaiser team and will provide the opportunity of maybe picking up an Infernal Soul with the next dragon. Infernal Soul on Kaisers, like Infernal Soul again, uh, like it's the only realistic soul that will always have like a positive impact that is potentially game changing, potentially because it buffs every one of your team's damage. Just grants them a lot of extra damage for free. Especially if they're poke related. Ooh, the enemy Nami comes around the corner. We need to be careful here. Uh, this will, no way we will survive this yet. The entire enemy goon squadron just uh, popped up. The Avengers have assembled and death swiftly commences. Uh, back to Dragon Souls. Dragon Souls, as they are for how much commitment you have to put in to get them, provide you with too little benefits. It's just not good enough for what they provide you with. Um, Infernal, however, depending on your team composition, will provide you a decent payoff. 
because it just adds raw damage and raw damage is the most intuitive thing to play against. And from that angle, it's definitely something that's worth having, but getting it is probably one of the biggest issues because getting free dragons in solo queue is like playing the lottery over and over again because it's certainly not dependent on you most of the time. So just getting or taking what you're given just seems like the easier choice. And here we have a 12 minute Baron in assembly. Look at the entire Goombas making their appearance. And you be careful though, because Kha'Zix, if he jumps into the pit and queues the Nasher, he's not isolated. Like the, the Nasher is isolated because monsters and champions are different. So losing it against Kha'Zix is something that's very easy. And they even lost it against the Lucian Killing Instinct in the back line, the ultimate of Syndra didn't kill. This was a 4v5 situation with the fist split pushing in the sideline. A massive loss to Camilla on the hunt looking to cancel some recalls fails to do so, but they'll lose an inhibitor tower, a vital one for the next Baron fight. Now the fist is on the run looking for potential fight here. Will the fist, re like the fist might be in the brush bottom right looking for a play, or oh, he isn't. And with the Nash, it's so difficult to clear minion waves if the Nash is still applied to them. Oh, it's such a sad thing to always see. Quick little transfer thread move. And yeah, this game has become so much harder simply because uh, the Nash thing. Like, I don't think the Nash should be flipped like this. Because Aurelia doesn't really have a tool to secure. She has a Q. And her Q doesn't outperform Kha'Zix's Q. And Kha'Zix's Q can almost always guarantee uh, that his Q is going to hit the Baron and it's going to be an isolated Q because monsters and champions are differently coded. Therefore, they're isolated only against their own... They're non-isolated only against their own kind. So monsters and champions. And, uh, well, yeah. It's like similar to Hecarim trying to do Nasher against anything that can one-tap it. Now we have the Lulu bonus damage popping off on the Camille. The set ultimate, the... Uh, was kind of pointless. Because the Camille was dead anyway. But yeah, I guess that is that. But uh, however, this will probably cost them another opportunity in the mid lane. Super mini waves constantly walking in the bottom side of the map, providing them with a lot of extra gold, given the fact that Nasher already has uh, been dead for quite some time. They didn't get anything with the sad Nasher outside of the one tile on the bottom side. Luckily, um, the next objective is going to be the dragon on the side of the super minions, which will at least not punish them too hard for the fact that they have an inhibitor lost. Also, there's so much, like, if whenever you look at these massively stacked up minion waves, there's so much gold down there. And as for just general gameplay, like, many times you'll be like, should I group with my team? What should I do? What should I do? How can I do this? And more than often enough, you'll be like, yeah, I should just not group with them and just farm and push sideways because nobody cares about sideways. And in fact, nobody does care about sideways. Look at these all in here mid lane for no reason. For no reason, this fight just starts to just go on and the Lulu's being hit by the Fizz ultimate. Nothing happens though. The Fizz survives the punish speed, dies to the last auto attack. Now the last, now the Camille jumps in, dies instantly. And what was this fight even for? Nothing was happening. Look at the mini wave on the bottom side of the map. Like, again. This fight was completely purposeless. If the enemy team just waited until somebody showed on the bottom side of the map, they could have just done whatever they wanted to do, however they didn't want to. So this massive mini wave on the bottom side of the map was completely left alone and will now be picked up and turned into billions of gold for another player. That there's such easy decisions you can always make by just checking your side lanes, what is happening there, how many minions are there, what is going to happen in the future, like 30 seconds into the future, 45 seconds into the future, what will happen, how can I use this absolutely set in stone, because it's set in stone what will happen to these minions, kind of thing to my advantage. Here, nobody g gave a damn. They just chose to fist fight when there was no reason to fist fight, because the enemy didn't spread thin already even though they had to, or have to soon. And then, yeah, you just give away a free game for absolutely zero reason. 
Now with the Infernal Soul in their hands and the enemy team being split on the bottom side of the map, they could again flip for a Nasha or go for traps. They just need to make sure to have proper vision on Nasha, but we see like a ward on the Nasha by the enemy team. Second ability connect, so much damage, it hops into the Nami. Fish, where'd you go? Damn, that was so much damage of the Kha'Zix. Needs to be really mindful here, everything one taps the Kaiser now. Fish connects onto the set, is getting veiled, nicely done by the Lulu. Look at the damage popping off constantly. They're waiting for the next wave to come in to just certainly end the game. The enemy has to all in very early or just try to clean wave. If they don't do this, they'll just lose. Like for example, Fisk could have just tried to jump in onto the minion wave and they would have not lost the game here. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel and come back for more Rift Guides content. See you soon.